Hey guys, Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Uh, we're gonna do a quick video for you today. Nothing long here, we're just gonna do one example. We're gonna do a little bit of explanation on determinacy of space trusses. So before, in our previous video, I'll leave a link down to that down below. We covered uh, two-dimensional trusses. In this question, we're gonna cover three-dimensional trusses. So um, a, a few things change, and we're gonna go over what changes compared to 2D. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, the rules for determinacy, and then we're going to solve a quick question. And I'm actually going to show you the different types of reactions. Okay, so if you remember in 2D, when we did 2D uh, determinacy in, uh, in plane frames, we had three equilibrium equations that we needed to satisfy. So we needed to satisfy that all the forces in the x direction equal zero, all the forces in the y direction equal zero, and the sum of all the moments acting also equals zero, so that our equilibrium conditions are satisfied. In a space truss, now we have six equations of equilibrium. Okay, so in, at, in any particular joint, we have that uh, throughout the whole truss, we have that the sum of all the forces, and now forces can act in three dimensions, not just two. Moments can also act in three directions, not just one anymore. So now we have six uh, equations of equilibrium. Okay, and as if you remember from previously, the basic rules of determinacy are that if the, nu the, uh, the number of reactions it equals the number of equations, then we have a statically determinate structure. We have a solution. If we have less, then we have a statically unstable structure. And if we have more, we have what's called indeterminate. So um, that's, that's important to note here, and that's actually the main difference between two-dimensional and three-dimensional trusses. So there's two, actually, types of determinacy that are required to be checked for in space trusses. External determinacy, I don't know if uh, you're going to cover that or not, but if you do, uh, it's, it's fairly simple. The idea is if a truss doesn't have, or a space truss, doesn't have six reactions, then it can't resist uh, a force in X, Y, or Z, or possibly at X, Y, and Z, um, because there aren't enough reactions in order to resist a force in any of those directions or a moment. In that case, it's statically unstable externally. And so let's just, uh, you just take a look at this table here, and if your reactions are six, less than six, or greater than six, you just label it as such. The internal determinacy is kind of the thing that we were talking about uh, previously with, uh, with 2D trusses. So this here, we have uh, if the number of members plus the number of reactions is less than 3J, we have a statically unstable structure. So it's exactly the same as before. So, um, and uh, you know, we have statically determinate, statically indeterminate, but it's exactly the same concept. It's just now 3D. The one thing that does change here is going to be the, rea the reactions. So the reactions are no longer just fixed pin and uh, roller because now we have three force reactions and we have three moment reactions. So those can uh, be a little bit trickier. So if you take a look at the screen, before we start this example problem, which is pretty simple, and we're only going to do one, you have uh, different types of supports. So if you're going to be studying uh, space trusses, if you have it coming up, I really suggest that you familiarize yourself with these types of uh, these types of supports and, and the kind of reactions that they generate. So if you take a look at the category one type force, what we have, uh, for example, ball is we have a some sort of structure sitting on a roller or just a sphere, and you see that Ry is vertical. Okay, so Ry is vertical there. That means we only have one reaction and a link. Same thing. If we have a roller in uh, category two, we're going to have two reactions. We're going to have a reaction in X and we're going to have a reaction in Y. But uh, in Z, the uh, translation is not uh, restrained, so the member is free to move in Z. For category three, we have ball and socket, as you'll see here. And in, for a ball and socket, which is actually what we have in our example problem, the member is restrained in all three directions for Z, Y, and X. And uh, for all of these here, as you can see, there's no moment reaction, so they're not fixed uh, in any direction. So let's take a look at the example problem that we have here. Uh, what's, what's really important, actually, is that you know, you, you just think about it. You don't need to memorize this stuff, but you do kind of need to understand what a reaction means. So a reaction essentially means that uh, either motion or uh, uh, bending or, or turning in a, in a direction is being prevented, okay? So it's the same thing as in 2D as in 3D. 3D can be a little more confusing to conceptualize, but just take a look at the, the reaction, the support, and if a member can move in a particular direction, it's not restrained against that direction, there's no reaction. So that's just a really good kind of, just a, just a general rule in order to kind of be able to think through these problems rather than just memorizing, because memorizing, as we always say, can get you in trouble during tests. Okay, so let's take a look at this example, and uh, I'm just going to count through the reactions here. This one's really simple. I, this, I just wanted this to be kind of an explanation video, and I wanted to show you that table. And uh, I'll show you how to apply it now. All right, well, go ahead and start by counting M. 
Okay, where m is the number of members. Okay, so for m we have m is equal to one, two, three. Okay, so we have three members in this uh, space truss. Well, let's look at r. So r in this case is reactions. So uh, we can go to our table, but let's just take a look and let's see what's going on here. So as we can see um, at our reaction here, we have a roller on top of a pin. So so this pin cannot move in if we draw, for example, this is not an excellent uh, plane, but let's say this is Z, this is X, and this is Y. Okay, so if we draw uh, our plane here, a three-dimensional plane, this this pin cannot move in X, it cannot move in Y, and it cannot move up and down in Z. Okay, so it's restricted against all three planes of motion. But it is free to rotate in any direction it wants. So that means that each one of these ball and socket joints has three reactions. So three reactions per joint. Perfect. So if we have three reactions per joint, these are all the same joints. Okay, so if we go ahead and we just, and, and we count those up, we have one, two, three reactions here. We have three reactions, three reactions per reaction, we'll say. So that our R is simply nine. We have nine total reactions here. Now, what is our J? Well, our J is joints, and it's the same thing as the other one. All you need to do is count all the joints up. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, so J is equal to four. And if we go ahead, and like we did before, if we just fill out the left side, fill out the right side, see which one's bigger, we we, uh, we compare it here and we're good to go. So M is 3, R is 9, that's 12. And on our right side of the equation, we have 3, J is 4. So we're given 12 and 12, they're equal. And you'll know that this is now a determinant truss. Okay, perfect. So that's the answer. Um, you know what, it's, uh, it's not really a difficult subject, but I think the trickiest thing here is really the reactions. So really understand the reactions, try and uh, take a look at them and think about where the movement is being restricted and you'll just be fine during the test. Thanks for watching guys, much appreciated, and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.